I got the go ahead over there. Good afternoon. Thank you uh, for coming today. Uh, today we want to um, profile a case of ours that we, we really believe that we can get this case solved, but we need the public's help, and that's why we're here today. We also need the media's help in covering this story. Uh, the media covered it back in 2016, and October 5th of 2016, this is how this, this started. A hiker was hiking in Butterfield Canyon uh, and found a body wrapped in heavy plastic. Um, they called Unified Police Department. We went out, we did some investigation. Uh, and the medical examiner uh, identified uh, this person as 26-year-old Alejandro Reyes. We were also notified that this was a very violent crime. He was beaten viciously, and we want to solve it for his family. We don't want those perpetrators who committed this crime to continue to be out in our communities. That's why it's so important that we continue keeping this story in the media and in the public uh, so it will be in everyone's minds. Alejandro's vehicle was located in Riverton, which is not that far from Butterfield Canyon, uh, by detectives. Since that time, we have uh, been working with uh, many uh, various uh, yeah, other, you know, uh, sources that we work with in these type of cases. Uh, but the Utah Bureau of Forensic Services is one of the uh, other departments that we work closely with, and in this case, they were able to uh, basically identify multiple possible suspects through DNA. However, we don't know who those suspects are. We only have the DNA, and that's why we want the public's help. If you know anyone that knows anything about this case, if they were in Butterfield Canyon, if they knew Alejandro, if they saw him within those couple of days that his family hadn't seen him. His family actually reported him missing three hours after his body was located. But he had been missing since that Saturday. So we want to make sure that from that time frame they last saw him to the time that he was found, that anyone that uh, remembers anything, if they would come forward and, and notify us. We have one of our best detectives working on this case, Detective Ben Pander, um, and I know we can solve this case, but we absolutely need the public's help. And what I would like to say to those individuals that were involved in this case, we're going to solve it. We're going to find out who you are. It's better for you to come forward and work with us on this rather than us have to go out um, and find you ourselves. And that's what we're asking is we know people have information. And, you know, we have asked Alejandro's brothers to come here today to make a plea as well. And I think this is important that they tell us who Alejandro was um, and why they would like the public's assistance. So I'm going to introduce Edgar Reyes and Angel Reyes, and they just want to say a couple of words, and then I'll follow up. Thanks. Go ahead, Edgar. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> uh, my name is Edgar Reyes. Um, this is my brother, older brother, Alejandro Reyes. At the time, um, he was taken from us. He was 26, and I was 22 at the moment. Um, some things I want to say about him is that he was a really great man. Um, at the time, when I was 22, I had my first child. He was about two years old, and he would come around every, every time that he get that he can, because he was always working. But when he did come over, he would always give uh, bring gifts for my son and to my niece that were living with us at the moment. And you know, he was just a, a really great man. Um, I could vouch for him and his friends that knew him from work, from three form. And from Hexel, that he was just a great man, and 
he would help out in any way he can and it's just it's just sad and it's it's hard for us even after five and a half years going on six years that that he's been taken from us it's it still hurts us and I just hope that the the public can come forward and with anything that they if they know anything about what happened or or <clears throat> excuse me or during the time to please come forward um, to to speak with Detective Ben Pender or to any of the sheriffs out here on working on this case and I want to say thank you to all of you guys for spending all the time and hours you know to make this case happen for us and to make it out to the public once more again and, but just overall uh, we do miss my brother and hopefully we can get justice for our family and just just thank you and overall we do miss him and, and I hope we can you know get justice Hello, everybody. I'm Angel Reyes. I'm the one of the three old, younger brothers of Alejandro. At the time when he he was uh, 26, oh, oh. I was 17. I just barely graduated. He was there with my great. Sorry. Still hard to talk about it. <laughs> he was a great big brother, not just to me, but to everybody, my little sister. He'd keep my little sister in track when she wouldn't do her homework. He, she, he'd get on his ca her case and get her on, on track. And when she did good in school, he <laughs> he'd reward her with her favorite DVDs just for her to watch on her spare time. I remember that she had like so many kids DVDs, and I remember my sister. She'd always be happy every time. <laughs> she, every time she'd get one. <coughs> Back to my graduation, um, the year I was in high school, my senior year, we, we were living together with my uncle. At the time, my parents weren't here. I, was, I, w I only came here by myself. And then he basically took care of me. He feed me. Uh, every time I'd come home from school, He'd take me out to go eat and just talk to me and just give me life advice. I miss him so much. It's not just me, all my family. It was so hard to see him get put underground. Overall, he was just a great big brother to us. He was a great human being. I, I don't know why they did this to him. He wasn't no, he wasn't tied to anything bad that I knew of. I talked to him every now and then, and he said that everything was good. So I don't know what happened, and it just. I hate that this happened to us, but I just plead to everybody that I hope you send in tips or whatever you know that caused his death to please come forward. That's all. I'm sorry this happened to you your family. As you can see the devastation to families of when there's a violent crime like this, uh, it just makes us want to ensure that we go out and we solve this case. And the only way we're going to do that is with your help. And that's what we're asking today, is to bring this family justice. We can't bring Alejandro back.
but we can bring this family justice. So um, please, please call us. 801-840-4000 is the Unified Police Dispatch number. Um, we also have a phone number for Detective Ben Pander, but I want to get permission to give that out. Am I okay with that? His phone number is 385-468-9816. Any tips, any information, he, he will uh, call you back, um, and we would appreciate anything. And we're, we can take some questions right now if you have any. Yes. Well, you know, with new technology, that's what happened a along the way. So we, we had DNA, but now we've been able to link it to um, individuals, but we don't know those individuals. So we have to go through that process. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know yet, but, but we will find out. Uh, right now, I'm not um, really giving out much information on that piece because we're, we have the information that there's multiple DNA, and that's what we're trying to do is break that out and figure out who it is. Right now, yes, yes, until we, we do identify it. Yeah, we don't even know if it was a robbery. We don't know at this point. I don't know. Um, you know, uh, there may be information that we can share later, but as of right now, we are asking for the public's help in uh, giving us information. Um, we don't want to compromise our case in any way, so um, that's all the information I have for you today. I, I don't know if they're comfortable to answer yeah, questions. So, Come up here. So, <clears throat> so for number call, I think this was on a Saturday, and me and my wife were we were at Sam's Club getting some things out, and we invited him over to just come out and hang out hang out with us. I want to say maybe this was around four or five o'clock in the in the afternoon, and we called him up, and he was like, "Hey, you want to come over? We want to watch a movie, maybe get some pizza or something, because that's what my kids loved at the time." And it was like, oh, no, probably not today. I'll be, I'll be in my room just watching a movie or something, so maybe next time. And that's, that's pretty much the last time we ever heard from him. And during that time, I was living in South Jordan, and he was living in West Jordan. So, and he kind of lived his own separate life, so there's very not much very communication that was going on because he always worked, and I always worked, not a family, so my time was devoted to my family. But obviously he was family as well, but just whenever we had time, we would hang out with him. But in this time, we just... You know, that was the last time we spoke. Mm. No, there was nothing out of the ordinary. He just seemed tired that day because we called him and he was like, no, I'll just stay home and watch a movie. But nothing out of the ordinary. So. Honestly, uh, uh, honestly, I don't have I don't know much very much detail about that. But we what we do know is that when we cleaned out his room, uh, when my mom came, you know, to clean out his belongings, we did find that movie there from the red box that wherever he got the movie from. But that's that's all we know. Yeah, I don't I don't know if that was the same day or not. Yes, the Legacy Springs in Riverton. We're, we're familiar with it. I worked out there in Riverton, so I'm familiar with it. That's not where they went there? No, no. That's just where the vehicle was abandoned. And that's what we're asking anybody that lived at Legacy Springs, anybody that was in Butterfield Canyon, uh, in the Harriman Riverton area. Uh, he lived in West Jordan. So there's a whole lot of 
area that needs to be covered, but somebody knows. So, I mean, you don't just commit a violent crime and not say something to somebody. So somebody knows information about this case, and that's what we're trying to push out today is if you know about this case, call us and help us solve this case. We don't know. I, I don't know that. It, it's part of our investigation. We try to figure out where, where he was actually um, murdered, and then we'll go from there. But I can't release any information from the detectives. And again, that would be part of the ongoing investigation, so I can't share any of that information right now. The purpose of today was for the plea to the public to help us give us some information. I can't share any of that information with you today. I'm not quite sure your question. You're talking about individuals I don't know who they are. So I'm talking about DNA of multiple people. Well, there was a phone, there was a phone contact with him there on that final day, final hours of his life there. And there was some digging into his phone number. That's part of our investigation. So. I, I couldn't tell you anything on that investigation. We're not going to compromise our investigation to answer your question. But that, that those contacts or those phone numbers are still active as part of this investigation? I couldn't tell you that right now. So how many DNA samples are we talking? How many samples are we looking for? Multiple is all I've been given, so I don't know the, the actual number. I've just get, been given multiple DNA samples. Until we weed that out, we won't give any more information on the case. Any people, people of interest. I would say they're people of interest. We don't know whether they're suspects or not until we right. talk to them. Well, I wouldn't say all that we can because as technology goes forward, we don't know what we'll discover two years, four years, ten years down the road. But what we have today, that's what we are making this plea. So, any other questions? We took one more. So that we know of, no, he does not go up there because that's clear up in the, the canyons. No one, we never go out there. So for him to be found up there, it's, it's just really odd to us. So to answer your question, he does not go up there. And if he does do something to relax, he just stays in his room and just, you know, just hangs out. So more like a homebody. yeah, more like a homebody. So. All right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.